Hello there and welcome along to our weekly look at all things League of Ireland. Jeremy Doherty here and I'm joined this week by former Van Harps captain and current Dungannon Swifts defender Keith Cowan. Keith, it's great to have you along again this week. Um, another busy week in terms of football action. We've had the, the European games and games in the League of Ireland too. And I suppose for Harps fans, there is reason to be concerned as their team continues to struggle for form. It's been a couple of difficult weeks uh, for Harris fans and Harris players, and I'm sure management as well. Um, the last, you know, two weeks especially, we were playing Longford Town and we were playing uh, Waterford United. You know, two games where both at home, where Harps would have been looking maybe to pick up points after you know a difficult month. Maybe you know, um, I think maybe they've only picked up maybe one point out of the last seven games. So. You know, it's, it has been a difficult time. It's a trying time for the squad, for the players. You know, it's uh, they they definitely were looking for a pick up with those two games. You know, as I said, there you're you're looking at those to maybe try and pick up. You know, wins especially at home. You know, with the two teams below you, and that just didn't materialise, Jeremy. You know, if you go back to the Longford game, you know, a one all, a one all draw, where uh, you know a freak goal that we all kind of looked at and couldn't couldn't see how it was how it was left to stand and then you know getting back into the game really quickly and then missing the penalty you know then rewind then just to, to last week as well to you know to, to get into the uh to, to, to get into the game and you're looking to pick up and um you know a couple a bit of a reshuffle in terms of uh the players that were available you have suspensions you have a couple injuries in there so um again you know going down uh, conceding a penalty and then um you know with 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 the the, the new guy getting the start jordan musto in there and maybe not uh getting off to the start that he would have wanted uh and then getting back into the you know the opportunity to get back in the game with, with a penalty and then missing again so you know those are all things that can, can i suppose culminate into you know a bit of a look loss of confidence within a squad but um an opportunity to bounce back this week uh, away to Dundalk, uh, a difficult place to go, a place where they might be boy because they have picked up a result there earlier in the season and they'll be looking to do the same now uh, come Saturday. I think the game against uh, Waterford, Keith, you know, the big talking point was the fact that Harps just never really tested Waterford, did they, when they were going for that equaliser? Okay, you had the missed penalty, which you referred to, but after that, aside from maybe one chance for Adam Foley, they never looked like finding that equaliser. Yes, as, as I said, you know, we, we looked at, you know, the, the players that were available and, um, as you say, you know, lost the captain early on, you know, through seemed like a, a head injury for, for Webster and, you know, um, bringing on players and again, a bit of a reshuffle. There was nobody really that seemed to be playing in their, <laughs> or the start of the game or finished the game in their, in their uh, you know, pre preferred position. Yes, there was a lack of urgency. It did seem to be, you know, the game. I know, I know you were at the game. I was at the game myself. There didn't seem to be much, uh, much left from the players, you know. Again, and that could be a confidence thing. Um, it was just, it was just a, a, a tough night for them, you know. And a game that maybe they were expected to do well in. And I know that Waterford have picked up recently, and you know they've got the new manager in there. Bircham has, has come in, and he's brought a lot of young players in with them, and they seemed lively, and they seemed the ones that were going to do the damage, and. Uh, yeah, it's just that they're going to need something. They're going to need something. Apparently, um, you know, news around the squad is, you know, that their spirits are high and the, and the lads are in good form and there's nobody really pushing the panic button. But um, from what we saw from what we saw the last night, um, they definitely do need a lift. And hopefully these uh, new lads coming in um, will, uh, will definitely give them that. And what, what do you make of these new signings then, Keith? I know like Waterford were, were clearly boosted by their new arrivals. And in fairness to Ollie, he hasn't uh, waited too long to, to make a, a couple of new additions. Jordan Musto, as you you mentioned, made made his debut at left back. Daniel Hawkins, then a new signing, a striker, and it's goals that Harps need, isn't it? Definitely, you know, you look at uh, you look at I suppose what they have already. You know, Olabi, you know, through all his endeavours and hard work, has struggled to find the back of the net. Yes, you have Adam Foley, and I suppose you know, need to be pretty thankful for him because if it wasn't, you know, Harts would be, would be really struggling without his goals. I think he's eight at the moment. Um, young Hawkins, uh, 20 years of age, you know, Swansea Hull uh, Academy, you know, he's been at Salford, uh, you know, still, still a young man um, at 20 years of age, like we say there, uh, attacking midfielder. 
uh, apparently is his preferred position is what he would call himself. So, you know, he'll be looking, you have to look at it as like he's come in now and he'll be wanting to, uh, you know, really kickstart his career. I know he knows uh, one of the dairy lads, Mark Walsh, maybe he spoke to him and, you know, he's uh, advising that it's a, you know, it's a good standard and, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good place to try and make your name as a, as a player or as a, as a professional player to maybe essentially get a move back across the water again. But, you know, um, to, you, you hopefully he would hit the ground running. You know, a difficult place to go, Dundalk at the weekend. Um, uh, you know, and it, they're a bit of a jackal and hide this year with, uh, you know, with some good results and then some poor results. Um, so, yeah, I think just we wouldn't be, I suppose we have to wait and see how it plays out in terms of, you know, if this lad's going to hit the ground running. Like we said, we spoke, you spoke about Jordan Musto there, you know, 30 years of age, you know, a good academy with Liverpool. Uh, you know, Wigan and, you know, but he's been a bit of a journeyman since that, you know, taking him, he's been to Sweden, he's been to Belgium, you know, Oman, I think was on the cards there as well. So, you know, he'll be, he'll be looking to, it looked a steady performance without setting the world alight last weekend. Um, you know, he'll be looking to get his fitness uh, up to scratch. And um, again, then we, Jared Doherty was, was the third one, you know, experienced goalkeeper. We know him from Derry, you know, he's had a good, uh, great career, 39 years of age. Uh, we maybe look at this one more as a coaching role as well. Maybe he's he's there for and maybe just as, as a, an experienced backup for uh, for uh, Mark Anthony McGinley. So, yeah, we'll just, uh, the jury's still out, obviously, on the side. And so uh, hopefully we'll see in the next coming weeks what those ads can offer this one. Yeah, OK. Well, this weekend's fixtures, Keith, last weekend, I suppose there was only a handful of games on, wasn't there, because of the European matches, but back to a full programme and a staggered over Friday, Saturday and Sunday, so it's going to be interesting. Derry City then, they're going to have a big game on Friday night against Shamrock Rovers. City's form has been so, so good since the arrival of the new manager and the question is, can they keep that against a Rovers team who, you know, Derry have a good record against Shamrock Rovers? Yeah, they do. And, you know, they won't fear Shimmer Rovers coming up to the Ryan McBride on, on Friday night. I think that one's on. Um, they, uh, the Shimmer Rovers obviously uh, failed at the hurdle there during the week, trying to get out uh, into the next round of the Europeans. Um, so they'll obviously be, they'll want to, want to get up and get back to winning ways as well as that there. Obviously, Rovers joined top on 38 points uh, with, uh, along with Pats and uh, along with Sligo, so you know their aspirations are very much still going to, they'll go and want to win every game. Pat, uh, City have been on a great run there. They've done you know so well since Rui Higgins has come in. Um, you know, unfortunate last week to to fall one 0 to Pats away to Pats, um, especially with Pats coming down to ten men as well. They thought they might have got something, but uh, no, they'll be looking to get back to winning ways. And you know, it's just I think it's a lot of credit to Higgins as well for what he's done since he come in. Working similarly with with the same squad, you know. There's uh, obviously talk last week of him uh, reacquiring Patrick McElhaney back from Dundalk and uh, Michael Duffy as well, both getting them on 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 pre contracts. So that's really going to lift the squad as well in terms of that there'll be guys looking over their shoulder and wanting to be putting in performances week in week out. And obviously with the fans as well, knowing that they have two top quality, arguably Dundalk's best two players coming back to Derry would be would be a fantastic boost for them. Yeah, and, and, and City's form has, has been so good. They lost patching, haven't they? And and Dundalk have made a couple of a couple of new additions. And that seems to have shown with a, a little upturn in form for them as well. They were impressive in, in Europe during the week and you know, probably hitting hitting form at the right time. Shamrock Rovers, unfortunately for them, losing out in Europe during the week. But a controversy over that game the other night as well. Their manager Stephen Bradley not too happy with a, a couple of big decisions in that game. Yeah, Stephen Bradley is a strange one for me because when it goes for him, you know, he's he he's all about it, and then when it, when it goes against him, he can he can spit the dummy there the odd time. So no, look, I thought that they 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 done really well to get back into the game. You know, a cracking goal from the ex Dock man and Richie Tyle there as well was uh, was unfortunate. I think he just they kind of ran out of time, unfortunately, and then maybe conceding that one later on as well. So no, I think. Uh, I think uh, they'll be looking to, they'll be fully focused now, obviously, on the league. And, um, you know, as I say, three points in Derry will be very much the top of their agenda. Before we leave Europe, Keith, we're, we're chatting here ahead of Sligo Rovers and Bowes, both in action on, on Thursday night. It'd be great to see if they could, you know, make home advantage count in both of their respective fixtures. Oh, yeah, both ties very much still alive. And, you know, Sligo, uh, 
off to the, um, at home this week, obviously. F H F Niger. I think they're uh, is, is is their team that they're up against. I'm not sure if I got that right, but uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, a Scotsman, Stephen Lennon, getting the winner last week over there. So um, uh, look, obviously we have a an interest. Obviously Shane Blaney played in that game as well and and did particularly well and has done really well since he's over the last month or so when he's been getting regular game playing. You know they've lost a captain Greg Bulger to a red card out there as well, so he'd be a massive loss for them for the game. But uh, hopefully home advantage. You know. I know that the Icelandic side aren't set in their league of light. I think they're maybe ninth or tenth in a, a twelve a, a twelve team league. So um I think that uh they they've they a massive opportunity. Slag like really good at home, they'll have a bit of, a bit of a crowd in there as well, hopefully for it. So um yeah, I think I think uh they, they'll be looking to push on in that one. Obviously the interest with Bowles as well. Uh yeah. you know, George Kelly the league's league marksman, you know, they'll have their homework done on him, 12 goals in the league this season so far. So another Icelandic side um, coming over to Daly Mount. Uh, Ross Tierney getting the equaliser for Bowes uh, in the 63rd minute last week. So they'll be, both those clubs will very much have their eye on the, on the next round and they'll, they'll be thinking if they, you know, prepare right and they're doing all the right things this week that they should be able to get there. And then, uh, of course, we've had the the draw for the the first round of the FAI Cup as well. Keith, um, Bo Bonaghi and Cockhill Celtic were both in action last weekend. Unfortunately, despite good performances from from both teams, they they lost out to Leinster Senior League opposition. So Harps and Derry City and Sligo Rovers, the only teams from the northwest uh, involved in the competition's uh, first round draw, which took place last weekend or took place on Tuesday night. Harps then drawn away to to, to Fair, Fairview of uh, of Limerick. Um, tricky enough tie. Ollie Horgan suggesting during the week that had it been at home, it would have been much much better. Yeah, I think when you're traveling down, you know, obviously you have a journey to contend with. But look, the, the boys will be well used to that. You know, it's an opportunity as well. But these games are all you know real potential banana skins, aren't they? And you know, it's kind of one of those ones. You know, if you win the game, you're supposed to win the game, and you know, you're supposed to win it comfortably because it's lower opposition and um you know but then you know if they if they happen to put on a performance and you know make it difficult like like these intermediate sides have done for harps in the past i remember crumlin coming up a couple of years ago to Balvin Fay and winning so you know harps have yeah, i think they played the, the the last time they were down there was 2002 and goals from paddy mcgranahan and johnny speak got them through that tie in a 2-0 win what harps wouldn't do for a bit, a bit of that quality at at the moment, you know, on that goal scoring prowess. So now look, it'll be a, it'll be a tough game for them, you know, no doubt. Um all he'll have his homework done on these lads. He'll uh, he will left no stone unturned in terms of this opposition. He'll not want to be going down there and potentially get an egg on his face. So yeah, he'll prepare for this game like he does Shamrock Rovers, like Dundalk. So he'll definitely have his homework done on it. As as we both all well know that there's not too many players in the league that, that he's not familiar with or in the country for that matter. So, yeah, it'll be a tough game, but you would like to think that Harris would have enough going down there to win that game. Yeah, and do you know what? I remember that game in 2002, Keith. I was I was at that match, and it took a late, late goal from Jonathan Speak to finally kill them off because uh, Harris were, were a good team then. Remember, they, they played in the FBI Cup final just a couple of seasons before that. So, right. you know, it would, have been, it would have been a major upset had they not come away with a win. Definitely, and I suppose potentially then, Jim, but the tie of the round would be drawn uh, against Derry, you know, Obviously, two league of our two uh, Premier League sides, Drogheda, you know, doing really well up there. I think they're in fourth position, you know, on thirty points. So I think they're, you know, they've been a, a bit of a surprise this season. Um, but then I think, you know, uh, to, Tim Clancy there is, you know, a, a manager that I would rate very highly, and you know, he seems to have a great mix in there. Um, youth experience. We've, we've spoken about him a couple of times on the show, so uh, I think that that for me has to be the tie of the round. Yeah, and uh, and O'Derry would have been hoping for a good draw because they have such a good record in the cup. They they love playing in the FEA Cup, so that's not the kind of draw that have been hoping for. But um, there ha there aren't too many big games, are there, Keith? A lot of the Premier Division teams have been paired against lower league opposition. Yeah, it's, it seems to have panned out that way. No Sligo, they um they have Cork, uh, you know, a home game against Cork. Uh, Bows are away to College Corinthians. So, you know, there, there's not too many massive ties in, in terms of that there. But look, I think UCD at Shelburne, um, you know, there'll be a couple of tasty affairs, you know, obviously with, with Dublin's teams and that involved. So, um, 
look, it's a good, it's a, it's a good distraction. You know, it'll be a way that you know some a team like Harps as well will hopefully kick on the next round and give themselves a lift. And you know, well, like a, a, a cup run like that, there can can like lift the entire squad, can lift the fans, and you know, give them something to shout about again. Just before I let you go then, Keith, what about uh, the situation in the Irish League? I know Larn and Coleraine and Linfield all in European action this week as well. But for, for you guys at Dungannon, how are preparations going ahead of the new season? You have to, you have to mention Glen Thorne as well. Jeremy, they're also oh, in, the league. <laughs> yeah. also in uh, yes. uh, league conference. This is uh, UF League Conference uh, action tonight as well. They're away They're away to Welsh say TNS, but I'll give them a mention. Of course. Uh, my apologies <laughs> about, uh, yeah so in terms of Dungan yeah look um, we've, we've he's uh, Dean Shields has had us in you know kind of once every 10 days just over the last month or so just to kind of keep us ticking over uh, look, with, with the league with the league starting on the 20 I think it's the 28th of August 28th 29th of August uh, so it's a it's a later start this year usually because of all the games played last season so, the, so to have that time off you know from the end of May to now would have been you know, to just maybe try and fit in a, a pre-season the last eight weeks would have been would have been quite difficult. So he's just had us in taking over, you know, very new squad as well. A lot, a lot of young lads in there. You know, I, I must bring the average age up to about thirty or something like that there. But uh, uh, yeah, a, a lot of young lads, a lot of good players have been impressed with the setup. I've been impressed with the way Dean's gone about things. Uh, funny enough, the first league game is, is against Glentoran, home to Glentoran, the first league game of the season. So uh, that'll be it'll be good to see them all all those lads again. I'm just I'm just very much looking forward to getting started and you know you know getting a few of the the pre seasons never nice an ever nice situation as you as you get that bit older you know it can be quite difficult in terms of the preparation and that. But look, I'm looking forward to getting started. I haven't played much football last season, um, not as much as I would have wanted to play anyway for sure. So I'm just uh, looking forward to these uh, couple of friendlies now coming up and I know I'm getting stuck in it and and hopefully hopefully getting done getting back up the table again. And finally, did you enjoy the Euros? That final on Sunday night was one to remember. Oh, it was a cracker. Well, in terms of, you know, you kind of got the full value for it because you got the extra time, you, you got the penalties. You know, the, the you know, it, was, it wasn't too nice. It's, it's never nice to lose in penalties. I think the whole county, the whole country turned Italian there for for a couple of days. Um, difficult for the, for the young lads, obviously. That's missed their penalties. And, you know, and what's come out, what's come out after is, has been disgraceful. But uh, look, they'll learn from that. They'll they'll pick themselves up, dust themselves down, and you would actually think worry that England have such a strong uh, young side there that they're, that they're definitely going to do something in the coming years. But all credit to Italy, I think they, I think they've they've been the team of the tournament, and you know they've a really good way of playing, and you know they've got a, a, a top manager in Mancini. So uh, yeah, look, like, it was it was a great tournament, and I think it'll be remembered uh, on like a lot a lot of positives after the last. Uh, 16 months or so Okay Keith great to chat to you as always thanks a million for joining us today um, a busy weekend of action ahead Harps in action then on, on Saturday against Dundalk Derry City hosting Shamrock Rovers on Friday night and Sligo Rovers okay they've got a big European match on, on Thursday evening but back in action in the league on Sunday and it's one that Harps fans will be keeping an eye out on as well because they're at Waterford Keith thanks for now Jamie thanks a million cheers <laughs>